what did we receive? Auto service. Now, we might be thinking, well, auto could be an asset, but this is the service, which is probably an expense. It's something that we have consumed. We see auto expense here. So we're going to post it to the auto expense. Auto expenses, like all expenses, have debit balances represented by the fact that they do not have brackets. We need to make it go up because expenses only go up. If they only go one way. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to copy the auto expense, copy auto expense, and we're going to paste that on top in C11, right click and paste it one, two, three. So how much did, uh, are we going to pay? We're going to pay the 320 was the auto expense. Then we're going to credit the same amount of 320, credit 320. And the only question is, what are we going to credit? We already touched on it. We're going to credit accounts payable. Now, does it make sense that we credit accounts payable? Well, accounts payable is a credit balance account because it's a liability and we need the bad thing to go up because we owe more money. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So, yep, we're going to credit that account. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put that on the bottom because credits just traditionally go on the bottom in cell C12, right clicking and pasting one, two, three. So there's our transaction. We're going to post that to three locations. First location being the trial balance. So here's auto expense. Here's auto expense on the trial balance. Here's where we're going to post the auto expense on the trial balance in cell I-15. So within I-15, we're going to say equals pointing to the auto expense of 320 in D11. What's going to happen? The 600 is going to go up in the debit direction, put us back out of balance, and net income will go down. So the expense goes up, net income goes down. And remember, net income is revenue of a credit minus the debits. Re uh, the credits are winning by 308680. Now we're going to post the other side to accounts payable. So here's accounts payable. Here's accounts payable on the trial balance. There's something in it, even though it's zero. What's in it? E6 plus D8. We don't want to delete that. We're going to double click on that. Go to the end of it so that we can see the activity within here. And then say plus and point to that uh, 320, which will make the accounts payable go up to 320 and put us back in balance. The reason we want those formulas is that we can then easily see by double clicking uh, what is in there. We can also use these formulas up here to see what is in there. Those formulas are located in the formula tab under the formula auditing. So these are the items here. I like to put them up here and I'm going to get rid of that. All right, so now we're going to post this to the subsidiary ledger. Why? Because the common question with accounts payable will be, how much money do we owe people? Well, the trial balance says we owe people 320. Who do we owe and when do we owe them? Well, for that information, we're going to need a subsidiary ledger breaking it out by vendor. So we're going to go over here. I'm now, it didn't tell us in the question, but I'm assuming the vendor must be this one related to auto a auto over here. So that's where we're going to post it. So I'm going to post it in the credit side to this particular vendor in M16 saying that this equals and then point to that 320, bringing the balance up from three, zero by 320 to 320, like so. Now all of our vendors, of course, add up to that 320, which ties out to the uh, trial balance. Now we're also going to record that to the general ledger. So the general ledger, remember, every account has a general ledger account. It's in order just by date. And we are just going to record the general ledger account for the accounts payable only just to compare and contrast the GL account for accounts payable and the new account that we need just for accounts payable being the subsidiary account for accounts payable. So we're going to post that same information over here in the credit side equals in U11 equals the 320 bringing the balance back from zero up to 320. So now the general ledger adds the 320, the subsidiary ledger adds the 320, the accounts payable trial balance adds to 320 and we can look at the next transaction, which is on 215. Business meal at Outback on account to be paid in the future. All right, so we had a business meal, and again, we bought it on account. So is cash affected? No, we bought it on account. We're going to pay it in the future. Therefore, we have an IOU. The IOU account, when we owe someone else money, is called accounts payable. But again, it's a, it's a liability account. We might want to think about what we got. In this case, we got... Uh, Meals. So meals and entertainment, that's going to be a type of expense down here. So we're going to say that's in the expense area. All expenses have debit balances. They only go up. 
Therefore, we're going to debit the uh, expense account of entertainment expense in this case. So I'm going to copy that. We're going to put that on top because the meals generally go on top or de debits generally go, I mean, yeah, debits generally go on top. So we're going to paste that one, two, three up here and the amount will be then for 640. So if we debit something 640, we are also going to credit something 640. We will represent credits with a negative 640 and that will put brackets around it for this problem. We're going to hit enter and it formats it for us. Then we just need to know what this account should be that we will be crediting. And we already said that that will be accounts payable. Does it make sense that we would credit accounts payable? Well, accounts payable has a credit in it. We need to make it go up because we owe more money. Therefore, we need to do the same thing to it as what it is. It's a credit. Uh, so crediting would be the same thing to it and that will make it go up that for so it makes sense that we credit accounts payable so i'm going to copy that g10 we're going to copy that we're going to put our cursor in c15 right click and paste one two three now let's post this to our three locations first location being trial balance so we're going to be down here in i16 so we are in i16 at the moment equals and we're going to point to the 640 for the meals and entertainment and once we hit enter what's going to happen it's going to go up by 640 put us out of balance and net income will go down so there we have that then we're going to post the accounts payable to the trial balance here's accounts payable here's accounts payable here's where we want to post it there's something in there what's in there e6 plus d8 plus e12 so i want to double click on it not delete it go to the end of it and then select plus and point to the accounts payable note that we're never going to put a negative sign in here we're just going to say equals and or pluses. All the negative signs are going to be represented here. So then we're going to select enter and then it goes up to 960 puts us out of balance. And of course, if you get confused on that, then, you know, you will see that if we go the wrong way by the fact that we'll be out of balance if, if it goes the wrong way. So now we're back in balance. We're going to post that same information to the subsidiary ledger. Why? Because really the, the accounts payable, usually the questions that will be asked, how much do we owe people? Uh, we owe people 960 saying that we can see that on the trial balance. Well, who do we owe and when do we owe it? Well, for that, we're going to need a subsidiary ledger in order by vendor. So we got the subsidiary ledger by vendor. We're going to go to Outback over here in uh, Q9. So we're in Q9. We're going to select equals and point to that 640 credit in this case, bringing this balance up to 640. And now the total adds up to 960, being the uh, 320 to A Auto and 642 Outback. There's the 960, which matches what is now on the trial balance. Once again, we're also going to post this to the general ledger. So every account has a general ledger. The general ledger is going to be in order by date. And therefore, we're going to post this same information over here in cell U12 equals and we're going to point to that 640 so there we have that remember every account has a general ledger we're only looking at the general ledger for the accounts payable account so we can compare it to the new activity being the subsidiary ledger we can see that the general ledger by date adds up to 960 the subsidiary ledger by vendor adds up to 960 and the trial balance adds up to 960. all right last thing and then we have to stop here so we're going to go to 315 it says we paid Outback for the purchase of uh, the business meals in past. All right, so now we're just going to pay that account off and therefore is cash affected? Yeah, we paid with ca cash again. So cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. And you might be saying we probably pay with a check, but again, that's the same thing, cash and check. We're going to put those in the same uh, account for now. The cash account is pretty much our checking account. So we're going to copy that. We're going to put that on the bottom because credits traditionally go on the bottom. So we're going to right click in C18 and paste it. One, two, three. The amount will be for a negative credit being uh, represented with negatives of 640 in cell E18. If we credit something, we're also going to have to debit something for that same 640. The debit will go on top. And then the only question is, what should that account be that we will debit? Well, why did we pay cash? Because we bought stuff. But we bought stuff in the past and now we're paying off what we owe the account showing that we owe people money is of course the accounts payable so accounts payable has that 960 we know we're going to debit it because we credited cash does that make sense 
well 960 has a credit balance in it we need to make it go down because we paid it off and we don't owe 960 anymore because we paid off 640 of it how do we make something go down we do the opposite thing to it which in this case would be a debit so it does make sense that we're going to debit it i'm going to copy this I'm going to put that in cell c17 c17 it's right there and right click and paste it one two three all right, so now we're going to post this out. So we're going to post it first to the trial balance. So here's the accounts payable. Here's the accounts payable. Here's the accounts payable where we want to post it. It's got a bunch of stuff in it. So I want to double click on it and not delete all the stuff in it. I want to go to the end of it and say plus, then post to that 640. What's going to happen? It's going to make the accounts payable go down and it puts us out of balance. Then we're going to post the cash. So cash is up here. So we're going to post this cash to the trial balance here. And we're going to post it to the blue area. There's already something in it though. Therefore, we're going to double click on it, go to the end of it, and then select plus. And then we want to point to that 640. What's going to happen when we select enter? It's going to bring the balance down here in the cash account and put us back in balance down here. So there we have that. Then we're going to post the same information to the subsidiary ledger. Why? Because when we think about accounts payable, the question will often be, how much money do we owe people? Trial balance says we owe people 320 but who do we owe and who am I going to write the check out to? Well, let's take a look at the subsidiary ledger over here to answer that question. So we'll go over to the subsidiary ledger, which is in broken out by vendor. And in this case, we are talking about Outback. It's the person we paid in P10. So within P10, we're going to say equals post this same activity, that same 640, and enter. So here's the normal activity we expect to see. There's the 640 increase in the payable then we paid it so it went up and then it goes down to zero and we're also going to post that to the general ledger just to see the contrast between the general ledger and the subsidiary ledger for the account of accounts payable so we're going to be in the credit side i'm just going to post that same information in cell t13 equals pointing to that 640 and once again that credit balance is going to go down from uh, 960 to 320. so we can see that same kind of information, that same pattern where we have it went up 680, and then it goes down. We paid it, right? We Then it went up, we bought something, and then we haven't paid that one yet, and then it went up, and then we paid this one off. So that's the normal thing. We should be able to check off, you know, the activity that happens and see that pattern within an accounts payable account. This, of course, being a, a bit simplified of account in the GL because it is in order only by date as opposed to over here it being ordered in order the same information by vendor and of course now the gl ties out to 320 as does the subsidiary ledger tying out to 320 and the trial balance also has 320.